Okay, so I'm going to talk about some things uh, that are the reasons why I left the Mormon Church. Uh, I'm going to try to make this a quick video, but basically I'm going to do it in two parts. Uh, and the first is going to be kind of like the beginning, like first half of my life. Like what got me kind of like some of the main problems that I had. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about some of the more peripheral, but, but well, not even peripheral, uh, some of the more uh, kind of nuancey problems uh, that I had a little bit then, but I can kind of articulate a little bit better now. Although I still can't articulate very well through like speech. I should have like wrote this, written a script for this, but uh, I'm going to talk about what I, well, the first things that made me question, because uh, I grew up in the Mormon church. Um, it's a, it's an interesting environment. Uh, so some of the first things that I questioned when I was in there, um, were, I think some basic religion things, some things that are more specific to Mormonism, but I remember being in, uh, you go to church, uh, every Sunday, uh, for, at the time it was three hours and in the, I believe third hour, uh, it's been a long time. It feels like it's been a really long time and I have a bad memory, but, uh, I think in the last the last, the third hour, you have what's called, it's either young men's or young women's, and you're kind of split up, you talk about stuff, sometimes you guys get together and have kind of like a co-ed thing, and I remember having kind of a co-ed thing, uh, and I remember just thinking, uh, at the time, this one particular Sunday, I was thinking, uh, because the Mormon church, uh, it's the, uh, you know, uh, the name is Latter-day Saints, uh, and kind of the idea behind that is that, uh, you know, we are, the one true church. We're the one church that has it all right. People will kind of, you know, haggle about how right it has it, but the idea is that, well, at least, at the very least, we have it more right than other people, which is one of those more nuance, nuancey problems that I got. Uh, but I remember thinking, um, the, the founder is Joseph Smith. Uh, it was in, I think, the 1840s uh, that it kind of came about, I think. Uh, but I remember thinking, how likely is it that I am in, uh, that, that I was just lucky enough to be in the one true church? Uh, and just thinking about it. And that's one of those lines of thought that you can kind of get lost down. At some point you have to realize, like, it's also unlikely, um, even looking at the science and stuff, that we would all be on you know, we, we would all be on this earth and all that, you know, this is all very unlikely, but at the same time, it's statistically certain that it's going to happen, and whoever ends up being on that earth is going to think those same things, but at the end of the day, it's going to happen, and, you know, no matter how, how much you think about it, it is going to happen, so that's kind of one of those things, but I thought about it, um, and I was like, yeah, it doesn't seem really all that likely, that's kind of odd, um, but in the Mormon church, you have, uh, I've been in kind of the ex-Mormon community a little bit lately, uh, and, and we have this kind of thing called your shelf, uh, and there are certain questions, uh, I think particularly in the Mormon church versus, uh, a lot of other churches, um, you will have certain issues that you'll put on your shelf. You'll kind of, uh, not forget about them, but basically the idea will be, well, it's in the hand of God, you know, God works in mysterious ways. Um, I'm kind of abdicating responsibility here a little bit. And that's what I did with that. And I remember when I learned about uh, the church's history with black people. Um, and uh, I, uh, I've talked to my dad a little bit, because uh, that was also a big problem with him. Uh, and he kind of, uh, he kind of has his own opinion on that. Um, but that's another thing that I put on the shelf for a little bit. Um, and then I had kind of just the, uh, the thoughts that you usually have, uh, growing up religious. Um, the kind of like, uh, I know the, the kind of atheist community on YouTube is kind of dead now. Uh, you know, we've already, we've, we figured that shit out, uh, pretty early on. So I don't really need to put all that into words, but you know, all the things you wonder about, like, uh, why... You know, why, why, why is, why is there a God? Why does there need to be a God? Um, why is he like kind of anthropomorphized? Why would the God be us in particular? All those kind of things I wondered about. And so a lot of it was just basic stuff that I wondered. Um, a basic kind of like atheist stuff that you'll wonder. 
Um, and eventually, uh, when I got to be around like 16 or 17, I was pretty much done with the church. Um, I, uh, my idea at the time was, uh, I, I like the culture. I think it's good. I like the community. Uh, and sometimes I'll go to church, but this doesn't make sense to me. God doesn't make sense to me. Another thing that I wondered about was, um, the idea of living forever, uh, because the idea of living forever is inhuman. Um, we are not built to live forever. Uh, if you do live forever as a human, then there has to be some kind of like change, uh, in how you work. You're not going to be the same person if you're living forever because just the way that we work is on like kind of a limited time, time span. And we aren't like, like you just get to thinking about like, what would you even do? Like, would relationships progress? Like how, how would that work? How, you know, it's like people, religion for a lot of people is, uh, an answer to the question about what happens when you die. You know, the idea that you just cease to exist is also kind of uh, inhuman, naturally, because when you cease to exist, you're not human anymore. You're nothing. Uh, it's not something that we're really built to understand. Um, but for me, the idea of living forever is just as inhuman. Um, they're kind of both on, it's like, it's, it's like exchanging one idea for another. And one idea, um, I think the idea of living forever can be more comforting, um, especially when your family dies and stuff, uh, things, things like that, like religion can be kind of something to, to, to stand on a little bit, uh, when you're in bad spots. Uh, but for me, if you really take it to its logical conclusion to, to, to the best of your abilities, of course. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. Living forever sounds horrifying. Like, it's like some fucking eldritch, like, like HP Lovecraft bullshit. Like, you, you think about it. Like, I used to just sit in my bed. Uh, I've always had a lot of anxiety. Um, I'm not sure if it's gotten better or worse, but I know it was really bad when I was a kid. And I used to just think about these things. I think about being dead forever. And I'd be like, Jesus fucking Christ, that's awful. <laughs> and I'd think about being alive forever, and I'd be, I'd be like, holy shit, that's just as bad. That's terrible. I can't even imagine that. That's awful. Um, so that just didn't work out for me. Now, some of the more specific things about Mormonism that make it really not right for me. These are some things that I've had to really think about, uh, think about, and I've been able to put into more words recently. Uh, so first, uh, there's just the idea, uh, of leaving. Uh, the way that the church treats people who leave, um, is essentially, uh, and there's a lot of, like, people argue about, like, um, doctrine and culture, but in reality, doctrine and culture are in, like, a feedback loop. You can't separate the two. And when, like, when you start to try to do that, you're ending up in apologist territory. Uh, you're ending up trying to, like, parse these little things and try to make things, uh, you know, try to kind of fit things into what you want it to be. Uh, but the reality of it is that uh, the way the church sees people who leave, um, the church kind of says that this is the only way to live the most fulfilled life, the church. It's the only way. Uh, and if you leave, it's a tragedy, uh, and it's, it's awful. Um, and then there's another kind of like more insidious, uh, kind of lie that the church, uh, that the church kind of peddles, uh, in a lot of ways. And I can explain those. It might not even be worth it because it might make this video too long. This thing's already 10 minutes long. What the fuck? Um, but, uh, so there is, uh, this dude, his name is, uh, I think Cory Antimer, uh, in the Book of Mormon, uh, and the Book of Mormon's pretty problematic too, but I don't have time for the, like, you can just read the CES letter, um, but, <clears throat> uh, a lot of the people in the stories of the Book of Mormon, uh, the people who leave the church, uh, these are people who, uh, they already know that God exists, um, God has, like, revealed himself to them, um, somehow. 
And so when they leave, they're kind of this like, like evil, just basically possessed by Satan uh, thing that is like just trying to get everybody else out of the church so that they can be you know, together in their evilness and stuff. Uh, and that's what's in the books uh, and stuff. Uh, but then the kind of attitude uh, that that translates to in the church, uh, the, the culture, uh, is that if you leave, people assume it's because uh, it's not because it didn't work out for you and you're just happier outside of the church. Uh, it's because you had some kind of selfish motive, uh, like you wanted to sin, uh, you wanted to drink or something, uh, you wanted to have sex with your girlfriend, um, things like that. Um, you were just not morally uh, competent enough to uh, to handle the church, um, things like that. Uh, and so you took, uh, you know, the coward's way out. Uh, and left the church, uh, sort of like the, uh, I like to look at it as kind of an abusive girlfriend, um, where, uh, it's like she, she wants you to believe, uh, that you, you know, like we had something, we had something good going, you know, why, like, sure, we had some problems, you know, we had issues, but, you know, why would you just throw that away, um, when we could just, you know, we could work on it, um, and there's, uh, and there's this kind of attitude that people who leave the church will be left with, and I've been left with, uh, that you wonder, you know, oh, maybe I just didn't believe hard enough. Maybe I didn't, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I didn't just, maybe I just didn't put my full effort into it. Um, but what you'll find usually, uh, is that that's not true. Uh, I mean, I've thought, I've thought that all the time. I still think that sometimes. Uh, but I look back, uh, and I think about, uh, you know, how hard I tried, you know, how hard I tried to pray. Um, I was really into reading, and so I read the Book of Mormon, and how hard I tried to really push myself to uh, believe in these things and have faith. Um, but it just didn't work out for me. Uh, I, uh, I wasn't able to do that. Uh, that did not make sense to me. I could not make it make sense. Um, it's not, I do not function in something like that, even though I still, you know, I still think some parts of the culture are good if you happen to find a good church uh, that, you know, full of nice people. Um, I just couldn't, you know, I couldn't make any of that stuff work. Uh, there's this, uh, <clears throat> there's uh, the idea that the church has of, like, sexuality, um, and probably one of the most problematic things Um is that uh, that it, you know love can only be between a man and a woman? Um, you know that's uh, that's that's pretty terrible um, because that uh, you know that cancels out gay people and all that. It doesn't technically cancel out trans people, but generally you look at you know the way people talk about stuff. You know there's no there's no doctrine on trans people. But generally, that ends up, you know, extending towards trans people uh, and stuff, too. Uh, but then there's also, even if they were to respect gay and trans people, uh, and, you know, you can't have sex before marriage, but, you know, you get married, you're fine. Um, even if that was the, the, the reality, um, the idea of sexual purity is also awful. Um, I, I've thought about, like, the idea of, like, virginity and stuff a lot and kind of realized, you know, there's not a whole lot to that, you know, virginity is kind of a, kind of just a, a terrible lie that we've all been told, um, it doesn't really, uh, I mean, you talk about, you talk about anybody who isn't a virgin, uh, and, and you, you think about it enough, and you realize, like, this shit, like, it's made up, it's not, you know, it, the, the idea of virginity is kind of harmful, um, and the idea, like the idea that you, if you're, especially with women, but with men too, uh, if you've been with another person, you're ruined, um, or there's some sort of, you know, there's kind of a mark on you. Uh, you can do the best that you can, but there's kind of a mark on you that's always going to be there. Uh, that's terrible. That's awful. Um, you know, uh, people, people will say all kinds of things, but if you get, you know, if you get, um, I'm on YouTube, so if you get, uh, you know, 
S aid. Um, you're you're gonna think those things. Doesn't you know? It doesn't matter uh, what like uh, you know. Your uh, some of your church friends can be uh, can be understanding, maybe if you're lucky. Uh, but you know, you're reading all this shit about virginity and stuff, and you kind of you know, it's awful. It's a bad idea. Um, but let me see. The idea of faith, that's that's also not specific to the Mormon church, but I don't like it. I think I think it promotes uh it promotes believing in things uh that uh that haven't proven themselves worthy of your belief. Uh I, I think faith is kind of a shitty idea. Um and people um and that's how you uh I think that's why a lot of the Mormon community has fallen for the Trump shit, all that fucking bullshit, uh why they're all Republicans and stuff. I think a lot of it, um, it's also the kind of regressive social values, but it's also that the church doesn't want you to think. Um, it celebrates the people that think the least. Uh, if you have the most faith, um, i.e. if you are able to accept uh, these things that these people tell you um, the most, uh, you are the most virtuous. Um, and some of the pitfalls of that might be if, say, you are in, like, what, the how long ago even was that? Like the 80s or something, 70s or 80s. Um, if you're a Mormon, uh, if you're in a Mormon in the 80s, um, you know, you'll have like all these sorts of niceties that you'll say to your black friends. But at the end of the day, um, black people uh, can't live forever with their families. And you know, that's just how it is. Um, you have to be faithful. And I don't think that's right. Uh, I think uh, that the idea that you can just put something into God, God's hands uh, enables you to not work on problems. Um, it enables you to look over things because they'll be fixed in the future. And that's what a lot of people did with Trump too. I was even, uh, I kind of fell for that Trump shit a little bit. Um, you know, I was like, you know, Hey, maybe it'll work out. You know, you never know. Not in my hands, that kind of bullshit. Um, it's, it's not, it's not really conducive to, uh, to a good, uh, a good society, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really exactly fucking breed, um, a healthy society, um, but, yeah, those are just some thoughts, um, there's also the history, I think the Mormon church has been really, when it hasn't been lying, it's been really, uh, dishonest about the history, especially with Joseph Smith, um, uh, and, uh, you know, the way that, like, uh, his wife, uh, I believe, refused to acknowledge uh, the polygamy thing uh, till the day that she died because she hated that shit. Uh, he was basically just like, well, you know, Jesus said I could. Uh, and, and, and people will say, uh, like, with the, with the uh, black people in, in the church thing, you know, we're at a point where most people will say, you know, that was messed up. But, you know, he, he, the, 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 the prophet at the time, you know, they're all human. Uh, but then you talk about some of the bad stuff that Joseph Smith did, uh, and it's like, what? That's uncalled for. Not my prophet. Um, so, you know, that's some things, but, yeah. Uh, I don't have any a animosity towards the idea of, like, believing in God or anything like that. Um, but I think that a lot of times you'll end up in a bad spot with some of these things, uh, with with a lot of religious things, and more so than most religions uh, in Mormonism, um, like, a lot of, like, I think a lot of religious schools are teaching the Bible, uh, as more of kind of like an allegorical thing, uh, or kind of like a fantastical history kind of thing, where it isn't necessarily, you know, true, uh, on its face, but there is some truth in it, um, kind of thing, uh, and that blew my mind, because in the Book of Mormon, uh, you know, uh, in Mormonism in general, uh, you just look at it and like, yep, this all happened, this is true, this is true, all this shit happened, oh, it doesn't make sense, God works in mysterious ways, we don't have to explain it, um, so that blew my mind, to learn that other religions have a more, uh, you know, are, are able to actually progress and look at things with a little bit more nuance, uh, and realize that, uh, you know, like the church says sometimes, but doesn't actually act on, uh, that, yeah, people are fallible. Um, I don't have a problem with believing that you have a living prophet, but if you can't believe he's fallible, 
then you're in a bad spot. You're in a cult. Uh, or at least you're in a cult mentality. You know, maybe he's not down with that shit, but if you're believing that, you know, it's not going to be good for you. But yeah, those are some thoughts. Uh, I'm cooking some eggs, so those are probably burnt now, so I got to go get those. But uh, yeah, it's my thoughts on Mormonism and why why I left. Uh, and I might do some more kind of more in-depth things about like my experience and stuff. Because uh, there is some really interesting things like uh, the uh, sexual guilt uh, that the church imparts on you, uh, I think is, uh, really terrible, um, and, like, uh, the LGBT thing with the church, uh, that's a present concern, that's something that needs to be worked on, uh, because that's bad, uh, but, yeah, I can get into that, uh, in a future video.